So in this step function, we have to decide what number c makes this function continuous everywhere. If we look at the first piece, when x is less than or equal to this number, we have a polynomial which is automatically continuous. And then right below that, step two, we have a polynomial also continuous uh, when x is greater than c. So there's only one point we have to worry about, one x value, which is when x equals c. So what we can do is take a left and right limit, make sure that they are equal. So we want limit x approaches c from the left, f of x, to equal f of c, which also needs to equal the right limit, Now it turns out that right here, when we're less than c, it's the same as if we're equaling c. So automatically on the left limit, these are already equal. So all I'm going to do is plug in f of c and wherever I see, so x equals c, so we're using the first one, c squared minus 6. So that's the left side of that equation. Now the right side, the limit x approaches c on the positive side, f of x. Now we're using the second x is greater than c, so we're using this part here. And that's 10c minus 31. And I need these to be equal. So we're going to set 10c minus 31 equal to c squared minus 6, and we're going to solve for c. I like my, C's, my square term to be positive. So we'll subtract everything to the right side. So I need minus 10c plus 31 minus 6 is plus 25. Now, if we're lucky, this will have some nice solutions here. Maybe it only has one solution. That would be great. So there's only one c value. And... Let's see, I'm just going to take a guess. So negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Negative 5c and another negative 5c, add them together, negative 10c, and we've got c squared. So I can already tell the zero product property that 0 equals c minus 5, so c equals 5. And that will be our c value right here.